Welcome and Shalom everybody. Greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jehovah, Yeshua, Messiah, the soon and coming King. The Lord bless you as you are listening to this study. The Lord keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and reveal Himself to you. The Lord be gracious unto thee who are listening. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and be pleased with you and give you His peace, His shalom, as you are going to listen the word of truth. As you are going to listen the revelation of the second letter of God's Aleph Tav, the Hebrew alphabet, the Bet. Thank you, Jesus. Before we start this word study, we're going to give glory and praise and invite the Spirit of the Lord to take over and to anoint our eyes to see to anoint our ears to hear with the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ. Without Him, we don't see. Without Him, we cannot hear. So we ask the Lord, in the precious name of Jesus, to cleanse us with His blood and to make us a pure and holy vessel, a house where He can glorify His name, Join with me in praise and adoration of His Word. Join with me in lifting up His name in praise and adoration to touch His heart so that He can give us the bread, the living manna of Jesus that we need of today. Lord, prepare Yes, Lord, to be a sanctuary, a vessel for you, pure and holy, set apart, tried and true, with thanksgiving, with gratitude, I'll be a I want to be a vessel so that you can work Lord, through prepare. me, Lord. Lord, prepare to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy, Father. Pure and holy. By your blood. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Take away our ingratitude. Sanctuary. Yes, Lord, only for you, Lord. Lord, Jehovah. To be a sanctuary. In Yeshua's holy name. With thanksgiving, I'll be a tabernacle only for you, Lord. Whatever it takes, Lord, here I am. Lift up your name. Come down, precious spirit. Come down. Pure 
and holy Father, cried by your fire, test me, O Father, take away my ingratitude, the living vessel, dedicated to you. You be all the glory. You are King of God. The Son of the Living God. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Hallelujah. I'll be a a holy bed, a holy house for you, Father. Make us, Father, as a living sacrifice. Make us a sanctuary today. Help us to see, Father, the revelation of your Son. How he became a dwelling place for you, precious Jesus. Hallelujah. As you already sang together with me, the second letter of the Hebrew Paleo alphabet is the Bet. The Bet represents a sanctuary, a place where the Lord God wants to live. Our God is a family man. He wants to abide together with us in unity and in peace. That's why he sent his son to be a sanctuary, to be a tent for his presence. Jesus chose to be a vessel so that the Father can live in. And this is what the letter bed means. A tent. A house, a dwelling place. The letter bed comes from the old Hebrew traditions of the nomadic Hebrew. When God wants to reveal himself, he reveals himself first to the Hebrew people and their lifestyle. The great God, to reveal himself, he had to come down to the level of understanding of those people he talked to. So by the tradition that his people were using at that time, he tried to communicate to them the letters. So in order for God to explain the second letter of his alphabet, he used their house, their dwelling place. And at that time, their dwelling place was a tent. The basic structure of the tent, or the floor plan, was divided into two sections. A private part, where you could not see inside, and an open place, like a courtyard, where you can have activity of the day, of living together. This is what you see here in the paleo form. The four square, and that's the letter bed. Later on, this letter evolved through time into the modern Hebrew letter, the Bet, also called the Vet, when you put a dot in it. Blessed be his holy name. So, the second letter means tent, a house, a dwelling place where you can live in. But the main point the Lord wanted to make with this letter that he was hiding in the tent and wanted to have fellowship with the family in the tent. The whole family of God is united in his son. His son is the one who is dwelling in the tent. It is the son of God that is building the family name. Jesus Christ the son, he is the Ben. ben Ja. He is the son of Yah, Ben. The letter bed also represents the son. 
And who is in the house? Who is in your house? Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. The bride of Christ is saying, I am dark. The sun has burnt me. The closer you walk with the sun, the closer you walk in the sun, in the sun of righteousness as a believer, then you get dark by the light of the sun. It will burn your skin. The closer you get to the Lord Jesus and His Father, His fire, His consuming fire, will burn you. So the bride is saying here in the Songs of Solomon, I am dark, dark like the tents of Kedar, like the tent curtains of Solomon. Blessed be his holy name. The letter bet consists out of a bet, a yacht, and a tuff. Bet represents a house, a tent, where the family is dwelling, fellowshipping. Hand represents works, worship, adoration, touch, and praise. Doing with your hands you do something. With your hand, you touch something. With your hand, you create. And the final letter, the cross, the mark, the covenant. So in this beautiful letter, the Father is teaching us that He wants to unite us in the family tent, in the house, so that we, by our experience, our fellowship, Touch and worship His holy name, His holy nature, that the Lord God has revealed in His Son, the cross, the covenant. The covenant is the blood of Jesus. Jesus is the law. Jesus is the Torah in flesh. So God Almighty, His Father, is revealing to us His Son. Remember, we already talked about the Aleph. Here I am, the Aleph, God says. I am that I am. But for you creation to know me, the first thing I need to do is to show my son, my precious son that I gave to you so that you can come back to me in fellowship and union with me. Blessed be his holy name. God is good. Jesus Christ is the bed. In Colossians 1 verse 19, we can see that God the Father chose this holy vessel, this holy tabernacle, this holy tent or house named Jesus to be a house for the Spirit of the Father. For it pleased the Father, Abba God Almighty, the unbegotten Father of us all, it pleased Him. He was delighted that in Him should all fullness dwell. I am talking about Jesus Christ before He had the body, and I am talking about Jesus Christ when He got a fleshly body. God the Father was delighted. It pleased Him that in Jesus... Because of his obedience to be a dwelling place, to have fellowship with the Father, the Father chose Jesus to be the dwelling place of his spirit and of his word. Isn't that great? And the same God, by this experience, by this example, wants us to follow the step of the Lord Jesus Christ. To be also a habitation for his son. So that the father can be glorified in the son. John 1 verse 14. In the beginning was the word, the bar, the Christ. The word of God that he spoke goes together with his spirit. That's why the word is the bar and the word is anointed. The word of God goes with his spirit. Where his word is, there is life. And without the life, without the blood, without the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the word of God is dead. 
That's why it is written, the letter is dead. But when the Spirit of God comes in the letter, the Word of God becomes anointed. It becomes Christ. That's why Jesus was the Christ. He walked together with the Word of God, the bar, in unity, echad, with the Spirit. Blessed be His holy name. And the Word was God, the Christ. And the Word of God was made flesh. The Word of God that came out of the mouth of God decided to be incarnated in the spiritual flesh of Jesus and in the human fleshly body, physical body also of Jesus when He was born. And He dwelt among us. He dwelt among us 2,000 years ago, and He also dwelt among us in eternity past in the loins of God. He tabernacled among us, it is written in Hebrew. To dwell means Shekinah in Hebrew. If you go back to the root words of Shekinah, it means that Jesus, spirit and soul, He lived together with us. He sat down in fellowship in the midst of His own. He sat down. He was together with us while we were stones of fire in the loins of God on the mount of the congregation on the side of the north. Blessed be His holy name. So Jesus not only dwelt among us here on earth, but way back before we were born, Jesus already in spirit and soul chose to be among us. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, Jesus said, there am I in their midst. There I will dwell in the midst. There I will come with my Shekinah glory to be present with you. This is what dwells mean. Tabernacle. He became bed. The word bed means also bed. The resting place of the Father. The Father rests in His Son. And in the house, in the dwelling place, the Father choose to have His rest in the Son. That's His resting place. We will go to the resting place of His habitation in Jesus. The rest, the peace, the eternal rest is none other find than in the Lord Jesus Christ. In Hebrew, flesh means basar. Carnal, fresh, human being, habitation. Our spirit, our soul, our body, our habitations. Habitations that we can see and habitations that we cannot see. We have three tabernacles in us in one. Our spirit dwells in our spiritual body. Our soul dwells in our soul body. And our spirit and soul dwell in our instrument, our human body. Blessed be His holy name. So when you see flesh, and the word was made flesh, it doesn't necessarily say about physical body, our flesh, when we are born. The word was made flesh, in this specific verse, John 1 is not talking about present earth. It's talking way back in Kedem eternity past. The word decided there already to be a tabernacle inside of the man, the holy vessel, Jesus, who was born. And decided to open his heart for the word of God to come in and abide in him. Colossians 2 verse 9 For in him, Jesus, dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Can you imagine? In Jesus, tabernacle lives the fullness, the overflow of the Godhead, Father, Word, and Spirit, in bodily form whether the body is spiritual whether the body is soul whether the body is physical 
in Jesus, God the Father chose to make him for his habitation to bring us together to the family name, to abide with us and have fellowship with us. Isn't God good? The second letter, Beth, represent the Son of God. In Hebrew, son means Ben. Ben consists out of the bed and it consists out of the noon. The letter noon looks like a seed, a sperm seed. Jesus the son, he is the one that will continue the name or the nature of his father. God the Father will continue in the Son. That's why Jesus was broken on the cross of Calvary, so that by his death, by his obedient death, he could live further in us. In Isaiah 53 verse 10, it is written, We shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days. In us, he shall prolong his days. Jesus, the Son, who chose to be an open house for his Father. The word Ben, or the word sons, means also to build. It is the Son that builds the house of the Father. It is the Son, by his procreating power, to build the family name. When you are a son, a male, you keep your last name. And your son and his son will keep the last name. When you are a daughter, you lose your name to your husband. In Jesus, we can prolong the name and the nature of Jesus Christ, the Heavenly Father, of salvation so that the family can grow. Blessed be his holy name. The root word of Ben, it also means a stone. Even Jesus is the stone of God. He is the foundation. He is the stone that the builder rejected. When we were in the loins of God, we were stones of fire. We were stones, seed form stones of the fire of the Holy Ghost, of the consuming fire of the invisible rock, the sewer rock. Remember, in the wilderness, the rock followed them. How can a rock follow the nation of Israel? It was an invisible rock. Jesus, united with the Christ, the angel of the Lord, followed them. And that rock followed them in the wilderness. Blessed be his holy name. 1 Kings Chapter 5, verse 5. And I will set your son on your throne, and he will build a house for my name. It is always the son that builds the family name. God the Father chose his only begotten son, the rock, to represent the father, and built the family name. And the family name is none other than the unbegotten God, representing his love, representing his life, representing his light of who he is. Jesus is the son of the right hand. He is the right strong hand of the Father. We can read it in Exodus. Thy right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Benjamin, the son of the right hand. The Hebrew word for Benjamin goes way back to Kedem. When we see the story of Benjamin when he was born, he was born when his father was very old. That word old means he is the son of my Kedem eternity past. Isn't that beautiful? God the Father is the ancient one, the Kedem one with no beginning and no end. And Jesus Christ is the Ben of the Father, the favorite son of the Kedem Eternity, Ad Olam, Eternal God. He was chosen because the Father delighted in him because of his love for the Word of God. 
that came out of the Father. That's why he became chosen and a set-apart vessel among the stones of fire. Blessed be his holy name. When you obey the Father as a son, the Father will delight in you. And by your obedience, he will give you more true and elect you to represent his nature. If you disobey the Lord, you become a bastard son a disobedient son of the family name. You are not representing more his nature of love. John 1 verse 14 And the word of God was made flesh and dwelt among us. That word dwell means he tabernacled among us. Shekinah. He walked and lived among us. Jesus is the Shekinah. Jesus is the dwelling place, the house of the Lord. Jesus is the tent. He is the temple. He is the place where you can experience the presence of His Father. The more you long to be in His presence, the more you are in the Son. And the more you grow in the Son, the more the Father will lift united in you to reveal Himself his heart and his nature. We can see in the word of God all the pictures that the Father, all the example that the Father wants us to give us, that he wants us to dwell in his tent. He gave the temple of Solomon. He gave the temple of Moses. He gave the tabernacle of Moses. He gave the tabernacle of Solomon. All a picture of of the house of God. Blessed be his holy name. In Hebrew 9 verse 11, we can see that Christ Jesus became a high priest. Let's read it. But Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, Jesus Christ became a more perfect tabernacle than the tabernacle of Moses. Blessed be his holy name. When he decided to live in the body of Jesus when he was born, Christ the Word decided to live also in the spirit and soul form of the body, the servant of God, before eternity passed. Everything in the Bible points to Jesus. The tabernacle of Moses was none other than a revelation in the past for the future of the Son of God. He is the one that we need to go. He is the one, the direction the Father is pointing us for the mansions that the Father has for us. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you where you can live. So that where I am, you can be there too, because I go to my Father. But in order for you to come with me, you have to open your tabernacle, your heart, so that I can live in you. Blessed be his holy name. Everything in the tabernacle of Moses, the furnitures, all the details, it speaks of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. You can see in the tabernacle of Moses that the furniture was laid out in the form of a cross, in the tuff. Jesus is the tuff in the tabernacle. And in the tabernacle was the presence of God when the priest obeyed the law of the Lord. The Father came with his presence. The Father came with his fire. You can see here a nice picture how the twelve tribes of Israel lived together around the tabernacle. Everything was pointing to the middle of the tabernacle, in the midst, where two or three are gathered together in my name, in my nature, in my love, Jesus will always tabernacle in the middle of it. Do you remember the story of Moses? Moses was a great man of God. He was the one leading 
the nation of Israel to the promised land. Let's read Exodus 33 verse 11. And the Lord, Yehovah, the begotten Son of God, the great I Am, spake unto Moses face to face. This was not the Father speaking. If the Father spoke to Moses, then Moses would explode because of the cabalt glory fire of his spirit. So the Father, through the Son, always speak to their servant. And the Lord God, Jesus Christ, as the angel of the Lord, came down and spoke with Moses, his servant, face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. They communicated. But listen to this. Moses, the great leader, he turned again into the camp. He turned again into fellowship with his family. He turned again into the people. He went out of the presence of God. He went out of the presence of the Almighty and went again back to fellowship and be with his family. But his servant Joshua but his Abad servant Joshua. And we all know that Joshua represent Jesus the Savior. Joshua means the Savior. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, the son of Nun, my brother. Nun is also a letter in the Hebrew alphabet. The son of everlasting life. The son of the seed. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, a young Adama, he departed not out of the tabernacle. Can you follow me? If you look to the story of Moses, we know that Moses missed it to go into the promised land because of disobedience to the Lord. Even you can be the greatest servant of the Lord, leading the people of God, and you can miss it in your relationship with him. God the Father told Moses, speak to the rock. And Moses disobeyed the Lord. He didn't speak to the rock. When you walk with the Lord, even you are the greatest leader, and Moses is a great leader for the nations of Israel. But do you see it? Moses didn't die in the promised land. He saw the promised land. I hope this put the fear and the respect of God inside of you. You can walk many years with the Lord. Dwell in His habitation. Obey the word of the Lord to do this, to do that. Have the greatest experience with Him and yet miss it. But His servant Joshua, that's why Joshua was chosen to be the next leader for the nation of Israel to lead them into the promised land and to conquer the promised land. His servant Joshua departed not out of the tabernacle. Okay, let's put this into our own understanding right now. Are you following me? Put your name in it. But his servant Julio, the son of Nun, a young man, he departed not out of Jesus, out of the presence of Jesus, out of the presence of the word. Well, I cannot say that about me. That's why the Lord says, Fellowship, meditate my word day and night. Spend time with me. Have fellowship with the word of God. So that that love and desire to dwell in his presence might be one with you. Isn't God great? Do you have this desire not to depart out of the tabernacle? And Jesus is the tabernacle. He is in our heart, but are we in Him? Are we in His tabernacle? Or do we go in and out like Moses when we feel like? Do you come into the presence of God with utmost respect? Or do you come whenever you feel like and want it? God the Father is the holy place. He is the secret place. He is the bed. And He dwells in the Father, Jesus. And the Father dwells in Jesus, the Christ. Let us make a choice for Him so that He can abide in us daily. And we have fellowship and dine with Him, eat bread together. Jesus said, He that opened the door, I will come in. 
and I will break my bread with you, and we will have fellowship. Blessed be his holy name. He is the perfect tabernacle. He is the house of God. Hebrew chapter 7 verse 17. Thou are a priest forever. Jesus is a priest forever. Que dem not sock eternity. After the order of Melchizedek, the unbegotten heavenly father, with no beginning and no end. When Melchizedek appeared out to Abram, he said, I am with no beginning, no end, the everlasting one, the everlasting father with the everlasting tabernacle, the priest of the everlasting habitation. And God the Father is saying about his son, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Blessed be his holy name. Exodus 25 verse 8 And let them make me a sanctuary, the Almighty said, that I, the Lord God, may dwell among them, that I may live among them, that I may bet among them. The second letter, according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instrument thereof. He wanted to dwell with us. He came down. He humbled himself and became obedient as a servant to bring us in. The Lord is saying unto us, Please be a bed. I want to rest in you. I want to abide in you. Are you willing to open yourself so that I can live together with you? To be a sanctuary so that I may dwell among you? And you know me and communicate with me? Are you willing to see the beauty of the letter bed? Are you willing to see the beauty of my son? He is the son in which I am well pleased. Jesus is the son of my right hand. Jesus is the son through whom I create everything. He is the bed. He is the house. He is the son. Blessed be his precious name. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. He that dwelleth, he that live, he that bet in the secret place, who is the secret place of the Most High? In whom is hidden all the secret, all the mystery of the Father? He that dwelleth with Jesus. He that dwelleth with the humility Son of God. He that spent time with the almighty right hand of the Father. The beloved Son. He shall abide under the protection of the shadow of the almighty Father. You will be protected by the house. You will be surrounded with a place to live. Blessed be his holy name. He is the secret place. He is the sanctuary. He is the hiding place in the rock. He is Mount Zion. Blessed be his holy name. Throughout the Bible, throughout the Old Testament, the Torah, the New Testament, we can see who is the house of God. Who is Bethlehem? Where do we eat bread? Who is the bread of life? Who broke his flesh so that we can eat? None other than Jesus who became the Christ. And right now, Jesus who became the Christ is Lord, Jehovah, and Christ anointed in the Godhead. God the Father opened up his house so that the Son, Jesus, together with the Christ, can return into his heart, in the throne of the Father. Jesus says, I am in the throne of the Father. To him that overcometh, he will dwell in my throne like I am in the throne of my Father in him. Blessed be his holy name. Exodus chapter 15 verse 17. Thou 
shall bring them in, O Heavenly Father, and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hand has established. Blessed be his holy name. God the Father shall bring us in and plant us back where we came from to the starting point in the mountain of thy inheritance. And where is the mountain? That's Mount Zion on the side of the north. In the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in. In the sanctuary, in the tabernacle, in the house, O Lord, which thy hands have established. Well, I want to go to Mount Zion. You know that song? I want to dwell in Mount Zion. You know that Mount Zion, you know that the mountain Zion is a mountain of rock and desert? There is no beauty outside of that mountain where you get to Mount Zion. It's desert. It's a solitary place. Why did the Lord choose Mount Zion to be his dwelling place? It's because there was no creation but him. On Mount Zion, the desert place, is none other than the Father. So that we as creation can only concentrate at him. So that we can focus and concentrate only on the Father and his Son. Imagine if you go to a beautiful mountain and you see beautiful trees, beautiful lakes, all kinds of beautiful creation. You put your focus on the creation instead of the Creator. That's why the Heavenly Father chose for the nation of Israel to send them out into the desert, into the desolate place, into the wilderness. Can you follow me? When you get into the mountain, into the secret place, the Father wants your adoration and yours adoration only. Blessed be His holy name. Are you willing to go to the desert place? Are you willing to be with Him alone? Or do you rather go back like Moses to the camp? Do you rather want to be seen? Amongst your brethren, amongst your brand, or do you want to be in the solitary place? Remember Jesus, he always went to the desert. He always went to the wilderness. He always went to a private place to be with his father. Let us love the bed. Let us love the dwelling place. Let us love to be in the tabernacle. Let us love to be in the word of God daily. Let us spend time with Him daily in your daily occupations. You are the temple of God. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. What are you doing with His house? Are you doing it enjoying your own self and desire? Or are you letting Him to be Him in His house? Do you see it? God is so merciful that He allow us to misuse His dwelling place. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. We love you, Jesus. We praise you. Thank you for your dwelling place. Cleanse my heart, Lord. Cleanse my temple. Is your heart the dwelling place of Jesus? Is your life the habitation where the Father delight to spend time with you? Are you a Bana house for him? Are you kissing the Son? Remember Psalm 2. Kiss the Son of God. Kiss the Son, lest He be angry. Are you kissing Him with the words of your lips? Are you communicating with Him with His words? Or are you communicating with the creation? Are you kissing and having affection? Are you kissing the creation and having communication rather with the creation? Kissing everybody? Or are you kissing the son? Kiss the son lest he get angry. So the merciful Jesus also get angry. If you don't kiss him. Have mercy on us. Cleanse thou my lips, Lord. Because I am a man of unclean lips. Touch me, Lord. My tongue. So that I might kiss the son. And he might delight in me. And kiss me back. 
Don't you love it when somebody kiss you and hug you? Why don't we first start kissing the sun? Why don't we first start giving our love, our touch in the tabernacle, in the sun, in the dwelling place, in the word of God? Blessed be his holy name. In Jesus is hid all the wisdom, all the treasure, all the knowledge, all the desire that we need. It's hidden in the tabernacle, in the sun. He is the life-giving bread. And He made us in the form of the cross. If you look to your body, it's made in the form of the cross. And it's the bed, the sun, that created us for His pleasure. Blessed be His holy name. Are you willing to become a bed? Are you willing to open up your heart? Are you willing that the sun lives with you and spend time with you? Or do you only want to know about Him? Don't you want to know Him personal? Don't you want to see His face? Spend time with Him. He is the bed. He is in the house. Prepare Him your habitation. Let your heart be His dwelling place. Your spirit, your soul, your will, that's where He wants to live. That's where He wants to communicate with us. Create in me a clean heart, Lord. Create in me a clean tabernacle so that your son might abide. Cleanse my thought from all my own wicked desires so that I can be a holy habitation. Did you remember where Jesus was born? He wasn't born in a palace. There was no room in the inn. He was born in the most lowly place, a barn, a dirty place in the eyes of men, in a crib of animals. That's where the Son of God wants to be born, in our heart. And He wants to cleanse our barn. Blessed be His holy name. He wants to bless us with His presence. He wants to grow up in us so that the Son in us can be revealed. God is good and greatly to be praised. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up His countenance upon thee and give you peace as you received the word of God.
Dear brothers and sisters, I trust that the Lord has blessed you with His Word. Now it's up to you, now it's up to me, to put what we have learned into practice. Don't be hearers only. Let us touch our Lord Jesus Christ by our surrender, by giving the best of us by going to Him. Thank you for listening. God bless you. See you next time. Jesus loves you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bye.